Hey guys, it's Anthony with the Rag Company and Oh, Levi with the Rag Company. And welcome back to a long awaited TRC live event. It's been too long. It's been too long, Anthony. You're right. We've had it feels like years. Well, not quite years, okay. I mean, maybe a few months, a few months. But the point is we wanted to get back into the swing of things, you know, yeah. with the holiday season coming up and into the springtime. We noticed a lot of folks kind of use this time to learn about different products. Maybe they want to watch some of these videos. Maybe they got an idea of something they want to do at home. And that's what these lives are for. Yeah, they got downtime. They want to learn, right? Mm -hmm. We have some holidays coming up around the corner, Maybe right? They want to spend a little money, spend a little bit of their money. And that's OK with us, right? Especially right. if it's at the ragcompany.com. But we have me and Levi here to do essentially a coding video today live for you guys to watch. Mm -hmm. But there's one other person in the ether that we should probably introduce as well. Where in the ether is he? He's there. Dane! Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm just well, over here in the podcast studio, so uh, I'll be fielding comments, questions, stuff that comes in, maybe posted to the screen, but you guys get to do all the dirty work, so I'll just make sure the uh, stuff flows from out here while you make sure it flows over there. That sounds good, Dane. Well, I appreciate it. Dane, fortunately, most of the dirty work has actually been done. We, <laughs> ah. we already did everything. So basically, what we, what we started this morning was it was very cold outside. Yeah but we washed Carolyn's car outside because it needed a heavy decontamination wash. Correct. And so for this wash, I, man, I soaked the car in an all-purpose cleaner. Ooh. Whole thing. Oh my gosh. Then I washed it. Yeah. Then I took a snow foam to it. Ooh, okay. I utilized a, I'm not gonna tell you like, names. Like, a, like an extra snow foam? As kind like of. the extra I took a pH balance soap. Okay. And then I took a, all-purpose cleaner and I bumped it up. Okay, gotcha. Kind of made a made a higher alkaline cleaning foam. All right, all kind right. Kind of a strip wash. Okay. Put it on the uh, entire exterior of the vehicle. Yeah. Then let it sit, do its work, kind of strip all the contamination away. Mm -hmm. Then we rinsed it off. Yeah. Then we washed it with a couple, couple wash mitts, uh, an ultra pad and some uh, chenille mitts. Okay. Then it gets better. Wiped it all down, washed it all down with a iron remover what kind of what kind of decontamination wash are you doing well has this thing just... been through hell and back well, what's going we, on we, all we've ever... you, how many times did you have to wash it a it couple times fine. a couple times so basically the biggest thing about this car was you and i have been the only two really to take care of this car that's true in the yeah. last three years yeah now it doesn't go through a car wash the only time it's washed is when you and i wa decide to wash it for carolyn and we yeah. try our best. Yeah. And it also becomes a test bed for a number of different products gotcha. that we're playing gotcha. with. So it's never had a full correction or protection on it. So That's we had true. to decontaminate it yeah. and then we had to polish it out. So a lot of great stuff. But so, you know what's even better? What's that? Anthony, uh, Jimmy made a video. I know, so Jimmy made a video to prove the fact that this actually all happened. All 17 washes that you gave this thing this morning, <laughs> did along that. with everything else. So let's go ahead and roll that video. Oh, 
Wow. So when did all that happen? Like an hour ago? No, Levi, that couldn't have been done in an hour. Yeah, that Jimmy was like a totally full, knocked all that out in like an hour. So like kudos to Jimmy. It's a full production video. Yeah. I mean, that was amazing. Not all together, but literally, no, we got here at like 8 o'clock this morning. Okay. And then washed, decon the car. Yeah. Did all that stuff. It was freezing outside. So needless to say, it was, uh, it's been a morning. Yeah, it's been I think a we morning. finished polishing and everything about noon. Okay. And then we could all break for lunch and then get back here and get ready to do this live. So yeah. you guys are literally seeing a full decontamination, full polish, all that stuff had already happened. But now we're going to get into just pure coating. The coating, coating goodness, right? Pure so coating. Have you ever coated with legend before? I have. Okay. How many times? Well, like a dozen. Would you say you're a certified legend installer? No. Okay, me. See, I can't say that either. I'm sure there probably is. I'm a sure PNS would probably be all right with yeah. calling us that, but yeah. um, I haven't taken one of their classes to be an actual guy. <laughs> but not the, not the, the best deal. student, but a great teacher. But you know what? I'm the one that cracked the code on Legend. What code did you crack? Was it like an algorithmic code? Well, did a lot it of people technology? didn't know. You know, what kind of code are we working with? This this coating has 41% solids in it. Okay, makes it very different from other coatings. A little thicker, right? A little thicker, and there's a little secret that you guys are actually gonna get to see live yeah. on how it works, how, how to remove it, how to level it properly. Okay. And the key to that secret are these creatures. So the secret is within the towel. It is the towel. Levi, that's ridiculous, it's, right? No, All towels are created equal. They're not. We make over 150 different types of microfiber towels. Each one's completely different. Well, what if I wanted to use this FTW here? It's not going to work. Okay, not with this towel. Right? Not with that towel. But it works great as a paint prep coating towel. It right? worked awesome for paint coating surface prep. Yeah. We were able to use that on the whole surface, wipe it down, it's absorbent, looks great. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple different things. Cool thing, too, we got to talk about applicators. Okay. This has the uh, barrier. Ooh. So it's a, the saver, uh, coating saver barrier. Okay. Similar to our pearl pucks that we did in conjunction with auto fiber. Mm, I can feel that, yeah. It's, it, is in, it feels somewhat like a diaper, right? You can kind of a little crunchiness. Like there's a little bit of something in there, yeah. but it keeps that this, up, makes it so this applicator isn't absorbing too much coating, right? right. Because that's all precious inside that bottle there. Mm -hmm. We want to keep more of that coating on the car and less of it in the sponge of that applicator. Yeah, so we're going to be using these applicators and then we're going to be using creatures. Okay. And when we apply it, we're going to be putting it on. Honestly, we've had this PPF on this car for three years. Has it been three years already? Man, we're yeah. getting old. So <sighs> I'm thinking we're just going to coat okay. the PPF too. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to coat the With PPF. With legend. We're going to coat everything. We're going to coat except everything. For the, except for the, maybe the glass. Well, I think I'm going to coat the side windows. Okay. Not the front window or the back window because there's wipers on there. Correct. Maybe later we'll put inspiration view on there right. and uh, make it nice. But, and then I got some dynamic dressing. Okay. We can throw a little on the tires. Yeah. Brighten them up. Maybe on the lower air dam. Get some yep. of those, uh, get the plastics looking their best. But we are going to coat some of the, the trim and some of that stuff up towards the top. Yep. Now, biggest thing is we want to show you guys exactly what you see on camera. So, mm -hmm. Anthony, that means we're not, we are not going to be doing the roof today. Because you can't see that on camera. Right. So. Uh, unless, well, do we have, okay, maybe we have like somebody like a Mission Impossible guy hanging from the ceiling, mm -hmm. right? That's a good idea. Right. Coming down with you know, a camera, camera mounted hand. or held, handheld. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what's, I like that. Uh, what's, what's, what's his name from Tom Mission Cruise. Impossible? Tom Cruise. Yeah. Right. Help we me, don't Tom have Cruise. That. Save we don't, me, Tom Cruise. We don't have that. So. All right. Here's what we're gonna do is uh, basically you got Jimmy on one camera, you got Glenn on another camera over here, uh, and then we've got our cameras placed around the studio. So you guys are gonna be able to see as much as possible, and when we get on the other side of the car, these guys are gonna be getting in there so that you guys can really get the full experience. If you have questions, feel free to comment. Dane is gonna be moderating, and he's gonna be uh, giving us those questions, and we're gonna be, hopefully, doling out those uh, answers and but wait there's more Aaron Allen has commented so that's really that was all oh, that's it was, all it was yeah there wasn't, actually wasn't much more but so, basically we're gonna get started on here yeah. we're here to answer questions we're here to have some fun um, but first we have to unbox this thing Ooh, right open it up so I'm excited get about there. that I probably shouldn't have put the gloves on first but it's already that's got right. kind of a little I, I got it started for you so it made it well okay didn't have to do you know, that. What, I mean, what, what's a guy supposed to do, right? When, when, you, when, when is there a knife when you need it? So, Legend, a premium 
coding experience. So we've opened several of these boxes, right? Oh, yeah. This is probably what, the seventh box we've opened? In the studio, yeah. In the studio, and it's always magical, it's always exciting. There's a cool little pool tab on here, you're gonna pull that out. And what I like is that the box is great, don't throw it away because you can store the coating back mm -hmm. in there so you don't lose it, so you don't break that glass, and then you can use it again, right? Hopefully within a shorter, a short period of time yeah. if you're in between coatings, right? So opening this up, you're gonna get your first little card here that is a legend installation video scan. So take your smartphone, give that a scan, mm -hmm. and it'll take you to how to apply this. It's actually this video that we're doing right here. It's not. What? It's the old video we did Dang on it. how to do it with the PNS crew. <sighs> Technology, so, right? Maybe next so, time. Next up, if you have a legend card, is this is an installer's card yeah. that basically notes the date and it also notes the uh, specialist name and the company, right? So basically, um, you can put this in your door jam, put this on your window. Yeah, where, where would well, you put it? I put it in the door jam. So the okay. cards that I've done, I, I uh, just take a permanent marker to it and fill it out and then put it on the door jam and okay. find a nice spot that's not too obtrusive. But it's a good enough it's what i like is that you mark the date so then it's something that's visible for your customer too so they can kind of mm -hmm. see oh man it's been six months or it's been a year since i got that coding it's been yeah. two years it's kind of nice to see and have that there plus if you put your name on there as the installer they mm -hmm. always see your name and you're always at the forefront of their thoughts of oh, oh man see. i gotta call that person and get my car I cleaned see. again very clever very clever and so. it's a pretty sturdy tag this is going to hold up to a lot of, it's a like, really a lot nice of weather tag. yeah and it's very resistant so um, that's something that we'll probably be installing on Carolyn's car today. Yep. Seeing that me and you did it, right? Yep. And when you're installing something like a three plus year coating, this is something that you kind of want to have. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we are going to do is for sure we're going to do one layer of the coating on here. Yeah. If we have time, we'll do a second layer on the video. It just depends on how fast we get it on, how fast we get it off. Now, yep. when I'm putting this coating on, uh, it takes me about 35 to 40 minutes to get around a vehicle and get it installed by myself in my garage. Yeah. So, and that's per layer. So yeah. I get that first bit done and then they usually say to wait about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on temperature and humidity, to then layer your second coat cool. of inspiration or of legend. So that's yeah. why we're gonna do the one coat on this, on this series, but just know that wait about an hour Good, good rule of thumb, and then do your second coat. So, cool. all right, so here we go. Legend, this is what the bottle looks like. Now, previously it was coming in the red bottles. I believe, yeah. is it still coming in red bottles? It got changed, so there's gonna be a few in a batch black. that are probably gonna be a black bottle. Like a darker, darker yep. black. And then okay. uh, they're hopefully gonna get the red back when it comes back in stock. So it's a cool, it's a cool looking bottle. It is they really they cool. were pumped on it when they showed yeah. it to us. And so, and then I have an extra applicator here. So um, once you get these applicators out, you don't need to wash these. They're pretty much good to use straight out the box. Uh, you can kind of pat them out, maybe take some compressed air if you want to, uh, get rid of any residual manufacturing lint from there. But other than that, they're ready to go. Now, it is two-sided, right? And typically, we're only using one side. Yeah. So we can save the applicator for a future use. Or so, for the second coat. Or for the second coat. Yeah, Just whatever, depends. Whatever you'd like to do. And so, um, what, side, what, color, what, color, what side are you using, Levi? There's gray, there's red. What are you doing I say with? we go with red for this red? one. Yeah, make it exciting? I think it'll make it prettier, it'll make it more fun. Okay, so this has been paint prepped, this has been ready Whole to car. go. It's ready so to go. We can literally I think go right into it. I would like to see you start out Maybe on this, what would, where would you like to start out that we'll would be just, a good place to follow? So I like piecing the car out when I start a coating. Correct. So if I'm gonna piece it out, I'm literally gonna do the fender. Yeah. Now, I'm not gonna go past this bumper line mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna go up onto the hood. Yeah, we're gonna I'm cut, gonna we're work gonna on just the fender. Hard line right there, you're cutting right. it off. That way I don't have to get a little excess over here or know that maybe I did. Some people like to go like straight down here. Mm -hmm. I don't like doing that. I wanna be able to make sure that I keep track of everything I do. And usually if I start, then I'm gonna work my way around. That way, when I come back, usually the last thing I'm going to coat is going to be the bumper. And the reason for that, I have to lean mm. over the car mm -hmm. and I don't wanna lean on panels that I've freshly coated. So Correct. what we're gonna do, normally you would start on the hood if the car was a lot lower or easier, you could yeah. do the hood on a sedan, but on an SUV, I'm gonna start on this fender, work my way around, or what I'll do is I'll start on the door mm -hmm. and make my way around. And when I get to that other door, then I work on the hood, 
then I work my fenders out, yeah. then I go to my bumper. You're so, dissecting, you're cutting in pieces and you're doing it something, you're doing it in a, in a way that's men, you're mentally able to track it down, right? You're able and to you track it, it. And if you teach your employees how to do this, then it's easier to have somebody come along and help you yeah. because they have, they know your process. They don't go like, they're not over here wiping on the fender. Mm -hmm. If you always, always start on a door. Correct, yeah. They Perfect. know that, hey, if I'm back here yeah. and you're helping, you're not up there working on something that I didn't already do. Yeah. So, so um, let's go and dive into this fender. Let's show, show us how it's done. Because I want to see how you crack the code. I'm sure many other people want to see how you crack the code as well. A, under we'll, pressure. We have a little, well, we're in Idaho, Levi. It's true. You, know, you do realize that we, uh, you're at a higher elevation. No, not quite Denver elevation, but you know, we're still pretty high up here. So I like to make a, kind of an eye. That looks like a cross. An upside, is that an upside down cross? No, no, oh, it is a, an eye. You're an right. Eye. Okay. It was freaking me out there for a second. Don't be too scared. So <laughs> I like to load up the applicator right before I start, just so I always have enough product. Okay. And then as I reapply, I usually only reapply in the stripe. Okay. So um, like I said, I like to piece it out okay. and that layer allows me to kind of get higher up on that panel. Now this panel does have Expel on it. Mm -hmm. So, and you're tackling this whole fender. Yeah. Right? So I'm going to lay this on the whole fender. And we've been finding that legend does in fact stick to uh, PPF for quite some time. It's a, it, I wouldn't do it right on a brand new uh, PPF panel. Mm -hmm because you've got to remember there's got to be a lot of expansion and contraction. So if you- With time. Yeah, if you've just laid new PPF, I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't, I'd use something like a Halo, flexible like, coating like, like Halo. Halo. Yeah. That way you've got something that can kind of flex and move. But yeah. this, it's three years now on the front of this. It's so it's, it's not moving as much. So okay. we can put this back down onto it. So okay. now we've got the coating on the surface and basically we're going to let it, let it do its thing and try and flash. Now, one of the things that it does do, Jimmy, I don't know if you can get in on this little spot here, but this will start to pull apart. And when it starts to kind of pull apart and separate, you'll see these lines will start to move. There you go, perfect. So those lines will pull apart and then they'll start to spot. They will turn into little droplets. Little droplets, yeah. When they become those droplets, that's usually when the coating is ready to be removed. So keep an eye on the panel. Now. Is there an actual time for this? One minute, two minutes, three minutes? No. That's the hardest part about Legend, is it doesn't give you an actual timing as to when to remove it or when to wipe it off. You have to watch the coating. Now, if you wander off and you go do something or you take a phone call, you're going to be in a bad situation because once this dries, it's much harder to remove. But you have a small window while you're still in this wet zone where you can reapply the coating and not have as bad of a time taking it off. But, so we're getting close to there. You can see these are starting to, to separate yep. right in here. We're getting to where we need to be. So you've got the towel. Mm -hmm. So if you put the towel on there, let me get this spot here. If you put the towel on there, you'll find that, the, that it's kind of sticky on here. It's not quite ready to go, but when you catch that sweet spot. When you catch the sweet spot, it'll move easily across. Yeah. So what I like to do, the reason, this is the, how we crack this code, that creature, when it is on the surface and you move it, get ready to slide that towel across there. With legend, it won't let you move that towel. Mm -hmm. And you don't force it, just set your hand on there and try to get your hand to move. If it doesn't move, it's not ready. Let it sit a little bit and then try it again. This allows you to not make, you know, other people say, oh, make a pocket, you know, try a little test spot and see how easy it is to wipe off. I don't like doing that because I feel like you're polka dotting the coating. Yeah. You're kind of removing it before it's too early. So I like just setting a towel on it and giving it a light push to see if it's ready to go. And Anthony, that's starting to look really good. So I'd set that on there. I'm gonna go right in the fold middle it here. in fourths. Okay. And, and I'm see. gonna push. Yep. Okay, it's coming. Come in. So now I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna. I like to. I like to box mine in when I'm okay. going around, and I'll kind of box it in around here, and that way I'm not outwardly wiping. I'm yeah. kind of, and then I start wiping inward. 
So I'm going to box this in, come around through here, come around through here, and then from there I'm going to flip to another flat side on it and then start working around and working inward. Yeah. And then I will be doing my towel flip here momentarily, which is the other side, right? Right. And that's why I like this towel is because you've got the short nap that you can use to level and then the longer nap to come in and get your final buff. And that feels... Make sure you got enough of it off the surface. That feels awesome, actually. Now, for those of you wondering, yes, you can top this. So if you only want to do one coat of legend, you can do a coat of inspiration soul on top of it. But they do recommend you do two full coats of legend to get maximum protection uh, and adhesion. Now, this bottle is a 30 mil bottle. We're going to see how much of it we actually use on this Tahoe. I will say, or on this Yukon, I will say that I've done a couple vehicles this size and it drinks almost the entire bottle in one coat. So plan for that when you're charging your customers appropriately is that you may need to buy a second application if you're doing those two coats. So, so how does it look though? I think it, it looks, looks pretty great. Good, you right? did a good job. And if you want to do a security. How does it feel? You There's can do a little a, spot right here you need to get, a little correct. high spot there. So if you want to have like a, I call it a security towel, right? Or an extra towel. An insurance towel. Insurance towel. Did I say security? I yeah. say insurance. If you want to have an insurance towel, you can have one that's nice and clean. And this could be your towel that doesn't have a ton of coating in it. And you can go back through one more time if you have to knock anything down. Just hard part is with any coating, you can find that it can get into the towel or pick up on a couple fibers and actually still be somewhat wet and then yeah. spread it further than what you think it's going to go. So that looks good though. I think you good. got most of it. I'm happy. Looks like you got all of it. So, yeah. All right. So now we'll move on. Work on this door. Dane, how are we doing in there? You, you, you holding up? You haven't fallen asleep yet, right? Nope, I was just waiting for a break in the action to uh, take a look through the comments and just let you know we've got a lot of folks here just saying hi, dropping in. They wanted to make sure you guys knew that they were watching from uh, Hans to, uh, you know, good old Dan Pfeiffer, G, etc. We got a lot of these guys in here. But uh, also, they're not really leaving me a lot of questions right now. There is one, though, I'll give you guys. And it's, uh, it's from Brian Muller here. And you kind of answered it already, Levi, but I'm going to go ahead and pull it up here anyway. Basically, Brian was asking, why are you not also doing Soul on top of Legend? You can, yep. That's like I said, you totally can if you want to. Um, if you want to do two coats of, of uh, Legend and then a coat of Soul, you're more than welcome to do that. Now I'm going to do the glass too while I'm here. Okay. And you started at the top. I started at the top and I'm just cross hatching the glass. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at his starting point and then work my way around and then finish out with the glass. And what I'm probably going to do because it's glass, I'm going to switch to potentially a different towel for the glass rather than the same towel. Or I'm going to go back over it with my insurance towel one more time just to make sure. It's just, yeah. I don't want to streak in the glass, right? So taking a look here. So the trim still looks good. This needs I don't know, maybe maybe 20 more seconds. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. That's the biggest thing. Um, I did get a little overage onto this panel. Okay. So just be aware of that. It's not a big deal. I just want to wipe inward. Yeah. Right? So technically in. in this point, I could probably do that second panel. And by the time you're ready to wipe, you could just finish wiping and then move into that panel mm -hmm. by then. But I don't want to chance it just yet. We're still, still a it's early. still a uh, semi-permanent coating, right? Yeah, this stuff's hard to get off, especially if you high spot. <laughs> how okay, do uh, how, a... how are high spots removed? You got to polish them out. Polish them, right? Have you ever had to sand a high spot out? Yes. Yeah. How did it go? It was not fun. I did it yeah. on my truck, and I uh, <laughs> so I left uh, a high spot of legend just for just to see. I left it for four days. We left it on the hood of the red truck. Yeah. And when I came back. That weekend, after the weekend, I tried to remove it and I couldn't get it off. Then I wet sanded it with 3000, couldn't get it off. I mm -hmm. wet sanded it with 2500 grit. Got it, what I thought a little bit, 
but I still had that, you could see the ledge of where I left that. I literally just took it and blotted it on and left it to yeah. dry. And so I put a maximum amount, sat for over four days. And uh, when I came back, I couldn't get it all the way off. And I was cutting it with a rotary and wool and I was doing all kinds of stuff and it just wasn't going to break. So um, definitely one of those uh, pieces that uh, it's a good coating, strong coating. I caught that at the perfect moment. That was just, I mean, the feel of this right now yeah. feels just awesome. It's not, it, it's actually a really nice coating to remove when you get it on the right time. Yeah. It's when you do it the wrong time that you're like, you kind of feel like you're fighting it sometimes. And All that's right, the guys. hardest part. I've got some more comments here for you. Okay, Dane, hit us. Uh, first of all, Jesse Rayo, you know, uh, fell on his V-Rod out there. Yeah. Uh, he said he just bought a new truck and will be coating everything next week with Legend and topping it with Soul. Also, he got view for the glass. Nice. That would be great, Jess. Then I've got Edmund Iverson here. Of course, Ed popping in asking, is there any problem with Legend getting lodged in between the letters and the badges? So long as you get it off. As long as you level it out and remove it, it's not a, not a problem, uh, Ed. It's just if you leave it in there, yeah, it's going to be an issue. So, Okay. And then I've got Jesse popping in again, asking how long he should wait between two coats of legend to then put soul. Uh, same kind of time period, at least an hour. Um, if you can, Jesse, I'd actually wait till the next day and let legend kind of off gas and then then put it put soul on so i'd probably do it on a weekend maybe on a friday night coat the truck and then saturday morning come out and do the do soul as your topper okay that sounds good and then i've got g davis of course g popping in asking is the longevity of the coating affected by going on ppf instead of paint um possibly but uh, i would only worry about that if this was a fresh ppf job um, because of that, but because it's an older PPF job, I'm not all that worried about it or concerned. Okay. Oh, here's kind of an oddball one for you. I got Yo Hurl popping in asking, nice to see you live on something different. Is there an email address I can send you with some shoe questions? <laughs> some shoe questions? <clears throat> not sure what's going on I wish I was wearing there. my Brooks today. I'm wearing the Converse and I regret it. I'm wearing my Brooks. My TRC yeah. edition Ghost 13s. Look at those oh, bad they look boys. Great. Woo. No. Love those things. <laughs> <laughs> now what you're supposed to say? <laughs> and then everybody does it. All right, I got a few more here for you. Okay. Popping up Roper Crew. Recently applied legend to a new car. It looks like I might have missed a section. There's a long streak about two inches wide right down the side of the back panel where I must have missed wiping. How do I fix it? You gotta get some compound out and try and compound it out. Okay. And then reapply coating. Yep. Sometimes that's just the way it is. What happens to the best of us? <laughs> then I've got Poets Femel here. Is it necessary to put the cap on the bottle when you're not applying it onto the applicator? So like trying to preserve no. the coating. No, you're not gonna hurt it in any way. So Okay. <clears throat> then I've got Jeff C here. What would be the recommended min slash max temperature for application? Does a higher temp or humidity decrease, decrease the flash time? Um, yeah, a higher temp and humidity will kind of decrease that flash time. I mean, it's just going to flash faster. Um, I probably wouldn't try and install it in anything below uh, 50 degrees. So if you can, Jeff, I know it's a little harder for you, um, but if you can uh, at least get your garage to be at about a 50 degree. So add some heaters to it, uh, buy a couple space heaters or whatever, uh, just to warm the garage up. If you can get it into the 60s or 58, 60, you'll be all right. Good to know. Okay, I've got Jesse here. It seems like all the questions just started pouring in at once. So we're, we're getting a good field here. Uh, I got Jesse asking, just to make sure I got this correct, one hour between two coats of legend, then the next day for Seoul. Also, if dust gets on the truck overnight, should I wipe it down with ONR? Uh, no, you can uh, you can wipe it down with paint prep. Okay. Um, if it's sitting in the garage, it's just light dust. It's mm -hmm. not not that big of a deal. 
So. Okay. And uh, ah, Yo Hurl clarifies here about the shoe thing. Looking for Brooks, but I missed the Ghost 14s on sale for $78, and I wanted to cry. Oh, no. They were on sale for $78? That's a steal, man. When did that happen? Huge steal. <laughs> Jeez. And, it uh, was the 13s. They were <laughs> clearancing them, probably. Was it 13s? He said yeah. 14s. He said really? 14s, but maybe wow. he meant 13s, because I haven't seen 14s go for that. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, be so all the about most it. recent comment I've got here is from Edmund it's Iverson still, popping like in and saying, thinking. what would be the downside of applying Legend to the windshield? Yeah. Uh, downside is the fact that you've got to deal with your wiper blades, and the wipers would strip that coating or create a layer. I mean, you like get a, a lot of chattering too, wouldn't you? You could get a lot of chattering. You could get a lot of different things, so it's just being careful about that. I just don't like putting paint coatings on front windshields. That's why windshield coatings are developed, is so that they uh, have a higher tolerance against uh, that friction, basically. Well, and sometimes you yeah, can actually glass, see it. Glass coatings are yeah. a tough, tough animal to get right, so. Uh, let's see, we've got Umberto here popping in and saying, living in Puerto Rico, what would be the highest temperature and humidity that would be acceptable for application? Ooh. I, know I would probably, I would say you wouldn't there. be able to fight the humidity, but you could probably fight the temperature and do it in the mornings yeah. when it's a little cooler. Um, obviously, hottest day of the year, don't do it. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Um, I would probably try and get a, uh, I'd worry about my fans too nearby, just because you could grain, get some uh, fast curing. And even Anthony and I, this door is curing faster than this door was. You yeah. noticing that? Yeah. It's a little harder to remove. <laughs> and yeah. it's all in happening in the areas. same room, so you can't really blame it on temperature or humidity. It's literally just the panel you're working well, on. Well, I mean, we're essentially doing a speed coating application here on live. Yeah. But I mean, really, if you wanted to, sit back, relax, knock one panel at a time. You could coat half the car one night, maybe the next night if you have time, coat the other half. So it's not super time sensitive when it comes to, like, how do I say this? So we're not rushing just because this is how the coating works, right? We're rushing because we're tackling, we're biting off a little bit more than we can chew because we're doing two doors. We're doing this whole side of the car at one time. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying that, you know, if you wanted to do half this door, you could do half this door. If you want to do the full door, you could do the full door, right? Yeah. But I wouldn't take on more than this door. If you're looking for a size reference on a panel that I feel comfortable tackling with Legend, I wouldn't tackle more than this door in one single go for applying something. I would, you know. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, I would say if you're a beginner, cut this into a third, cut this in half potentially. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Umberto also kind of filled in the gaps there. He said, uh, here temperatures are summertime all year long and over 75% humidity. Yeah. So just do the best you can. Catch it in the morning if you can where it's a little cooler. Um, that's really the best you're going to be able to do though. Um, and then Poets from Mill here popping in saying, did you polish the glass or did you just clean it with glass cleaner? I don't know, ask Levi. We didn't, I polished the side glass um, and then the rest of it has just been polished with glass cleaner. Or not, I mean just cleaned with glass cleaner. Gotcha. So, now I'm gonna show you something here, Glenn, if you can get down here. So right here, we have a light high spot, right? That's just kind of happened. It's kind of streaky but it's, I'm, I'm seeing it. So, because we're still fresh, I'm taking the coating and trying to kind of reactivate it while it's still wet. And so you see I'm doing a couple different strokes on it. Now, I'm gonna take my towel and quickly run over it again. I didn't even let it cure or flash off, I just hit it as fast as possible. That's Not the other reason why we try and do a panel at a time, because if you see these high spots pop up while you're working, you can remedy them very quickly and easily by just using that, that setup. And here's some more right down here. Just go. Ah, there we go. Yo Hurl clarified again here on those shoes. Said, uh, 
Nope, the sale just ended. They really were 14s right on the Brook site. I thought 13s too. Read it more than once there. just to make sure. <laughs> All right, here's this is probably easier to see. I've got more questions here when you guys are able. Okay, go for it, Dane. Uh, did you hear my one from Yo Hurl about the sale on the shoes? Oh, hold on. He, uh, oh. I'm, I'm losing you. Hold on a second, Dane. Sure. Let's swap a towel here. All right, go for it. Okay, so Yo Hurl just wanted to clarify they really were 14s. He double wow. checked on the site and everything. He thought they were 13s at first also, but it turned out, nope, they were 14s right wow. on the site. So whoever got those 14s for 78 bucks a piece, that's nuts. They're normal. That's a great, great deal. Normally nowhere near that low. So that's uh, that's a good deal for whoever got them. Sorry you didn't get a chance there, Yo Hurl. Uh, I've yeah. got quite a few more questions here. They're all kind of cropping up in batches here, but got one from Facebook from Aaron Allen here popping in and asking, what about putting a paint coating on the glass and then topping it an hour later with a glass coating. Um, you could try that. I would probably advise against it just because of the fact that they're usually not the same coating. So chemically, they may not bond to each other. And what might be happening is you end up removing one coating as you apply the second coating. Does that make sense? Like you almost, cannibalize itself kind of like when you have a solid wax going. and you, you wipe on a layer of wax and it just takes away yep. what you put you on previously i'm like, using more legend because it eats it, it eats does it, it cannibalizes itself when you're well, after it's yeah once it's gone on yeah. so yeah right, i got I a few that more this glass was being a little bit more sticky a little like yeah a little more stubborn and sure. also doesn't help that the inside of the glass is if you're coating glass Clean the inside of the glass. We uh, <laughs> we didn't do that. We're gonna knock out both an interior and exterior detail this morning. But as you can see, we were very busy, right? Just focusing on uh, the 17 washes that we had to do on the exterior. <laughs> so say it like it's a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So we're we moving over to the uh, rear quarter here, right? And so, are you gonna? What, what do you want to bite off? Because this is a pretty big area. So I'm gonna do this whole thing. You're gonna do the whole thing. All right. Yeah. Here he goes. There's no stopping him. Yeah, look at him go. Well, I've got several more questions here when you guys are ready. Okay, go for it, Dane. All right. I'm just going to keep them coming. You let me know if you want to do like a quick little moment where you're going to demonstrate something, but otherwise I'll just keep these coming. Perfect. All right. So I've got Anthony here. Go figure. Anthony is asking, what is the best temperature for a garage application of Legend, and will the humidity matter since it's being applied indoors? Now, we did kind of answer this earlier, but, you know, some people are joining a little later, so what's a quick recap? I'd say 60-40. It's the best, okay. best temperature, 60 degrees with a 40% humidity. I think that works the, the best. Well, I got a cable over my ear. Oh, look at that. Um, but that's kind of my that's kind of my favorite temperature, 60 degrees, with 40% humidity in my garage. I think works the best. It gives you the most amount of working time, so you can get the whole car done, and you're not like you don't have any surprises. You know, okay. I think that's so the hardest that's... thing, especially like you know when I'm working on them at home. I have my kids and and family and all that kind of stuff, so I have different obligations that I have to attend to sometimes, right. and so. I like that because I'm able to move a little quicker. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I'm able to get two panels done and not have to worry, and then I can go do something else uh, yeah. if and I get called away. Do you have a preferred away. drink of choice while you're doing a coating? Well, Diet Pepsi is just my jam, dude. Is it? It's just how I roll. <laughs> okay, I've got more here for you. I'm gonna start Making sure you guys can still hear me. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, we hear you, Dane. Go for it. Okay, just making sure. So, uh, well, this one's not really helpful in any way. It's just G. Davis being G. Davis. Is this the same vehicle Dane used to become <laughs> king of the Squim Linked Meat Fest 2017? Linked Meat. We all know Dane is yeah. 
Not a fan of loose meat, but linked meat. <laughs> Dane, is that true? Is linked meat okay in your book for some reason? That's just a real antiquated way of saying sausage fest. He just wanted to say it without saying it. Uh, <laughs> uh, then we've got Sean Prince here. When you guys say, quote, do it tomorrow morning, won't a thin layer of ambient dust settle on it overnight? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it will, Sean, but it's not that big of a deal. You so know, when you I said paint prep, clean it off with paint prep. <sighs> yeah. So when I first started doing coatings, I worried about dust all the time. Um, I would pull a car into my shop. I would lay down carpet that we would pull the car onto. Uh, we would wet the floor. I had an exhaust fan that I would turn on to help keep dust down in the shop. We would clean the shop to make sure that everything was as dust-free as possible. And I mean, we're talking that was 2010. So now the more I've played with coatings, the more I've used coatings and I've done different coatings from different manufacturers. Dust isn't as much of an issue. And especially after it's been coated, all you got to do, grab a nice long pile, microfiber towel, and a paint prep and clean the surface again, wipe it off. Now, if you are in, let's just say, you've pulled your coated, freshly coated car into a dirt floor barn, right? <laughs> a dirt floor barn, and there's a tornado outside <laughs> overnight, and it's stirred up the dust and the dirt, and you come back out and your car looks like it's been sitting in the barn for 30 years, that's an issue. Of course, rinse it off, wipe it off, get it clean as best as possible without scratching it, without damaging it. Because you don't want to put any coating over the top of all that dust. But in my garage, I don't have an issue. I close the doors, I clean the car, I have a fan that I have mounted that blows air over the car overnight so that I don't ever have to worry about heavy dust settling because the air is always moving in my garage. I have fans in different directions to keep airflow continuously moving around the garage at night while I'm at sleep. Then I get up, come out in the morning, don't have hardly any dust on the car. I do paint prep, I wipe it down and I'm done and then I do my second or third coat or whatever I'm doing. So you, there's a way to fight it. Yeah. Okay. It's being smart about it. Now I got a question for you guys here from Go ahead. Gorilla Jeebus. <laughs> Uh, asking, what up my dudes? How do I know when to switch towels? Is there a point the towel is too loaded with coating? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So I would say the point at which you're feeling like product is smearing or the towel is not doing its job and it's not absorbing, right? Let's just say it's pushing more product around. And with good lighting, you're gonna be able to see a towel that's just not doing a towel's job. It's gonna be, basically you'll have white marks, you'll see product pushing where you've wiped to. And at that point, if you're seeing that too much on something that should be a relatively clean surface, so meaning that if you've knocked everything down and the paint looks good, but let's just say you go to towel it one more time just as a security check, or I keep saying security, as an insurance check, and uh, you go to wipe and you see maybe residual product, at that point in time, I would say, okay, that towel's done. I need to switch to a different towel or I need to flip to a different side. So um, you'll know how it feels too. The more you use coatings and the more um, you get familiar with particular coatings, you'll be able to feel the weight of a towel change. You'll be able to feel the fibers change within your hands or within your gloves. And you'll say, okay, this is, this is done. This towel is done. So um, for this particular job, we pulled how many creatures, Levi? Six. Six creatures. And so six creatures might be enough. We might need to pull maybe one or two more depending on how we're looking or maybe even a different towel that we want to go back over, maybe like an Eagle 500 if we want to do something like that. But the creature is kind of ideal, like Levi said, in terms of kind of cracking the code for this particular coating. Uh, but for other coatings, like the G-Technic coatings and whatnot, um, we really like anything pearl related. We think the pearl weave is just fantastic. And so a pearl followed up with an Eagle 500, that's the go-to for that coating, whereas the creatures um, the go-to for this, which is actually not a bad thing considering the cost of creatures being, uh, being relatively uh, cost yeah. efficient, right? Yeah. Well, and I think that's really important information for people to understand because they may see something like a full-size Yukon or Suburban or something and think, oh my God, I need like 50 towels. Yeah. But in this case, you can make do with less than 10, it seems. And then what I would do too is just periodically stand back if you can and look back at your work, 
because what happens is you get too focused, right? You've been detailing a car for the entire day. You've done everything from washing to decon to polishing. And so once it comes to that last coating step and you're still looking so close at the paint and your eyes are still so focused on what's in front of you that sometimes you're not able to see maybe some residual spots around that area that you need to go back and touch up. When it comes to a coating, you want to see those things because that's going to harden, that's going to dry, and you're not going to be able to get it It'll off. It'll drive you so, crazy. So periodically, give your eyes a rest, look away from the vehicle, right? Give yourself a fresh, a fresh look somewhere else in the distance, and then step away, then glance back at it, and then get a look at it. Trust me, you'll find so many more things that you may have missed by doing that rather than doing this. I've done this for a long time, and I think, oh my gosh, that looks fine, well, right? Well, you get, you get Until, used to staring at a panel a hundred yeah. times. Well, yeah, and you it, don't realize that you stared at it a hundred times. That's what I'm saying. You step away and look away from the car. Look somewhere else. So back in the day when we'd finish detailing, yeah, what'd you guys you know, do? Back when I was a smoker. Yeah, you used to go out and smoke a couple cigarettes. Go have a couple cigarettes and we'll this look at not the a car, <laughs> walk around, look <laughs> at the car. But it was, a change of, it was a change of pace. It was something that caused you to do something different. Because otherwise, <laughs> yeah. you'd walk out and you'd look at the car and go, yes, yeah, it looks great, looks clean, <laughs> looks good. But then you go, whoa, 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 go back out there and have a cigarette and, and just chill out and look. And that's when my guys would go, oh, man, I missed this whole thing. Or I missed this spot. Or I missed that. Oh, my gosh, I forgot to dress this part of the tire. Yeah. And it was because they stepped away that they were able to see that. So where did you, where'd you start here? I don't even know where you started. I started right here. Right there. Okay. Going for the wipe. Did you start up top here? I did didn't. That was where I ended. That's where you ended. Okay. It's good to ask questions. Okay. So I've got quite a few more questions here, you guys. Um, <clears throat> let me pop back into them here. I've got Roper Crew, for starts, saying, after mm -hmm. wiping off product, I put the Edgeless 500s in a bucket of water for a couple of days to dilute before washing with rags to riches. Can mm -hmm. those towels be reintroduced into operations? Uh, yes and no. It kind of just depends. I mean, basically, if you're doing a coating and you try to do a soak with you know, rags to riches, I'm not saying that it, 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 could, it could very well bring back some, some, some I guess, some absorption of that towel. Um, but it, I guess it really just depends. It depends on the, the, the paint softness. It depends on maybe what, how much coating is soaked into the towel. Depends on it the depends, coating. Depends too. on the coating. It depends if it's dried. Um, we have found that some of the higher solid coatings out there, right, considering like what we're using right now, when you fill the applicator after this is done, you, you would, wouldn't want to take a risk putting that into a bucket regardless of with a solution and then reintroducing that to the paint. That's just me personally. That's how I feel. But with other coatings that feel like way more... Um, They're a little I, softer. A little softer. So for example, like Soul, right, from PNS, I would have no problem doing a coating with sole, and then taking those towels and reusing them for the same application. Not a problem at all. I mean, heck, even EXO, I'd probably yeah. feel pretty comfortable doing that with. Yep. But I think Inspiration, I think Legend, um, CSL, CSL. Are, are things that I just wouldn't take the risk on. It's just not worth it to me because if something were to happen or if some marring were to happen, I didn't see that until after maybe a couple panels, the time that it's going to take for me to go back to fix that does not justify the cost of me buying more towels or me having an extra stack of towels to be able to do that. It just doesn't, right? What's your, what's your time worth um, when you can spend, you know, another $15 in towels to maybe save yourself um, $50 to $100 in labor? That's just something to think about. No, the good. other thing is uh, one thing to be weary of and watch out for on when you're laying this coating or any type of thicker high solids content coating like this uh, is water. Yep. You don't want to get the surface wet for at least eight hours. The biggest thing with this though, is if you don't have all the water blown out of the vehicle and one of these little spots drips, it's going to carve a canyon in that coating. An actual canyon. Like literally, <laughs> that's not even being, uh, it's, not, it's not even being unrealistic. It looks like a canyon. And you'll have it and it'll be in the coating and stuck there. And so it's important to always make sure that you blow out the car. The guys were laughing because I kept walking around blowing it out. Blowing out her eardrums is what you were doing. <laughs> oh, no, I was going to laugh because like, it's canyon, good. I go, no, there's still GMC. water. So what would you use yeah. to blow it out, right? You'd use, I use compressed use air. Compressed air with a, with, a, with, a, with a gun on it. Yeah. Or you could also use a leaf blower, right? Maybe something blower. like an ego blower. You could use something like the Metro blowers yep. over there. You could use a blow blower. They have lots of different car dryers out there that work great. 
But what's nice about compressed air is typically you don't need a lot of it and you already know where the cracks are on a vehicle and you're really just shooting out those cracks. That's right? it. You're not re-blowing the entire vehicle. You're coming right here and you're blowing this out or you're blowing this out up top here because nice. for example, this is a big area where you're gonna, where you're gonna hide in a ton of water, right? Yeah. My wife's forerunner, it's literally like a river up there. And what happens is no matter how much I blow it out, it just, it just floods, man. And so it floods down to here and literally it, it'll, it'll, like I said, it'll canyon carve a coating and, uh, and I don't want that to happen. So coming up here, finishing this off. It's a little stickier up it here. It is getting a little sticky. And yeah, we waited a little too long waited up here. A little here. too long, but you know what? Is it going to come off? It is going to come off, right? And what's the worst case scenario, right? It's not coming off. What am I doing, Levi? You can take that wet applicator and go back over it. That's and then exactly, remove it, just remove it. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Does this feel like an infomercial yet? Are we saying enough really bad jokes, Dane? Well, you guys, I have so many comments that come pouring in anytime you guys go off on a tangent and I'm like waiting my turn. I've got a lot of stuff here for you guys. Dane, there's, so, Dane uh, <laughs> we barely have anybody that watches our channel. What are you talking about? How many comments are we talking about? When you say there's a ton, that's usually two or three. Do we have uh, more than five? About 15. No way! Wow. I can't believe it. People like us today. I know it's God weird, bless. but... Just roll with it. Dane, um, <laughs> start sending people free towels, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my <laughs> job now. Got it. Um, I got Juan here saying, what's hey. up, guys? Hey, so Juan. So that's cool. He's making sure you guys uh, know that he's watching. Now, Good. I, I'm going to skip ahead in the comments to one that I saw pop up by, like, multiple people who must have missed the beginning of this video. Okay. They were all asking, uh, Abel and uh, Dan... We're asking, what about the roof? You know, because we already talked about that, why we're not touching the roof today. Uh, yeah. If you were doing this, you would be doing the roof in a professional yeah. shop. But for the sake of doing this on video, frankly, unless we all get up on ladders and we have the cameras up on ladders, it's just not as easy to show you guys. Yeah, but basically. just understand, you should be doing that too, yes. Yeah. We're just not no. showing it today for the video. Exactly. So I will going say back. that this thing this thing's glowing pretty good, man. Yeah, this thing's it looks glowing. So awesome. um yeah, and we also might be doing a second coat of legend off camera as well. Because a chance are we probably won't have enough time today to do a second coat. But that would be the plan, because typically you want to wait about an hour, right, for the second coat to happen. Um, uh, or basically by the time you get around the car where you first started, you could go back over it again. And two coats is the max you want to do on legend. Don't try to do three. You're gonna have a bad time, right? Let, less is more in the sense that two coats is about as is, is about where you want it to be because um, after a while you might having might be having some clarity issues or there might be some smearing or might be some things like that. So two I'd call it good, and uh, one is even a sweet spot. I mean, heck, dude, just one looks fantastic, and then uh, bead maker, right? Maybe a little bit of dream maker takes it over the top. But um, like many probably other others will agree. A lot of the PNS products, especially within their formulations, they have a very warm glow to them. And I think that's something that we see a lot within Beadmaker, how it makes a car glow. It makes it look warmer. And I think it's the same exact thing with both Inspiration and Legend. It kind of brings more of a warmer glow to the paint itself. Uh, and then when you top it off with Beadmaker, top it off with Dream Maker, it kind of just takes it to the next level. So one thing to be aware with Legend don't top it with bead maker for at for, for least a, a, least yeah. a couple weeks. Yeah, for a while. Uh, they don't play very well together. But w which is unlike Inspiration, Correct. which does play well. Yeah. Together, and you can actually hit bead maker almost towards the end of yep. a Inspiration application, really with no issues. Yeah. So if you are wanting to spray something on, wipe it down for a customer or something, that's when I recommend Dream Maker. Yeah. When you're using Legend, use Dream Maker. It's just Works a lot better. Mm -hmm. Wait for a couple <laughs> weeks for the. Uh, I saw. I saw well, Anthony reach for that maker. Mountain Dew. I thought he was grabbing the paint prep and about I to drink it. I almost did. I almost <laughs> did. Now, what's funny is that even over at the Quail event, right when we were there uh, from Monterey right Car it. Week, um, there was several vehicles that were coated with Legend and then immediately hit with Dream Maker uh, shortly after that. And so, I'm not saying that you should do that, but I'm saying it is a possibility. Um, it does play a lot better than with Bead Maker. I think Bead Maker, you might see a little bit of streaking because of the silicon <coughs> content maybe within yeah, that. Yeah, they just so. don't, they, it, it really needs to flash out and fully cure, yeah. uh, Legend does, before it sees yep. Bead Maker. All right, now but. I've had a question here requested that I ask you guys. Okay. It's weird, because it's from the rag company. I don't know how that oh, magic okay. happens, but. Yeah. 
We'll pop it up on screen saying, we've had questions from customers that maybe you can answer, such as, what towels would you suggest to use after coating your vehicle? What, what? Towel? What towels would you suggest using after coating your vehicle? Anthony? Dane, you one more time, give it to me again. Hit me again. It's on the screen, too. <laughs> ah, I see. What uh, towels you'd suggest after using a coating? Um, any of our towels that the rag company sells, they're all totally safe. You can use every single one of them. I would say, I know though, it sounds crazy. Well, it, is, it, is, it does sound crazy because it kind of is. So maybe giving people some direction here, right, on something that they can pick up after they've coated their car. Because, again, not all coatings are created equal. There are some coatings that are softer than others, and we have to kind of take those into account, right? Always so, a diplomat. So I'm, I'm just saying, what if we have a soft coating, right? Which towel am I using for that? I don't know. I might be wanting to use something like a pluffle, right? I might be wanting to use something like Eagles for all my quick detailing towels. Um, but maybe if I have a harder coating, maybe if I have something like Legend or Inspiration, I only want Twist Loop everything. Yeah. Right? Not saying that Twist Loop is unsafe. I'm just saying that sometimes you just want to get the job done as fast as possible, whereas other people really want that plush goodness where there's probably some people out there that still like what? The Everest 1100, oh, yeah. perhaps? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you one of those people, Levi? No, I'm not. No, it's too much. It's too I'm, much time. I'm not an Everest guy, right? Yeah. But the thing is, is we've, you know, we've heard word that Jeff wants to bring it back. <laughs> He's like, let's make a big Everest. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I mean, know if we need to do that. I don't know if we need to do that either. Um, <laughs> now, with that said, I would say pretty much anybody that goes and gets a coating, uh, one towel, Eagle Edgeless. Eagle Edgeless. Hands down. Yeah. Get, get, Get yourself probably probably 10 Eagle 500s would probably be a good amount for quick detailing. Um, anything from waterless wash, rinseless wash, um, they work great for all those. And so Eagles are just, basically if an, Eagle is, if an Eagle is scratching your car, then there's something that has gotten into that towel that shouldn't have never been in that towel, right? You may have dropped that towel into the sand or to the dirt. An Eagle is something that should be safe on every single coating no matter what. Um, but between that, maybe picking up yourself some good drying towels. The Gauntlet's a fantastic drying towel, 70-30 blend. It's got uh, both twist loop and it's also got kind of the flared twist loop to where it's a little bit plusher um, and has a little bit of a higher pile there uh, to reduce pressure points. But um, other than that, I mean, that's it. I mean, really pick up some premium towels, 70-30 blends, preferably if you can find them. Fortunately, we have the highest amount of 70-30 blends in the industry in terms of being a, a microfiber uh, uh, seller and you know manufacturer so yeah have at it man I mean really you'll see the top sellers on the website and those are gonna be what most people are picking up and that's what I would get as well okay I've got a question here from Abel uh, jr. asking uh, you got a question let me see what can we get that up on the screen yeah this I'm gonna thing, pop it up there <laughs> uh, do you K coating on roofs first or do you all the rest of the vehicle so I typically like to do the roof first. That's I recommend that's, that. That's one of my favorite things to do. That way I'm not leaning over a vehicle that I've coated. And so when you knock out the roof first, that leaves the rest of the vehicle as uh, the world is your oyster, right? You're able you to- You get the hardest part done first. Yeah, and honestly, coating roof sucks. It, it's not fun, right? Polishing roofs aren't, <laughs> isn't, isn't fun, especially on taller vehicles. So get that out of the way first. Everything else is a breeze. And that way you save your back as well, right? Because when you are reaching over a roof, reaching over a hood, your back's gonna hurt. You're gonna have a bad time. So get that out of the way, right? You don't wanna see that for the end where you could collapse on a vehicle and then hurt yourself. So, Good um, time. but yeah, knock out the roof first, knock out the hood, and try to knock out horizontal surfaces first if you can, and then move your way to the vertical panels um, and make life easier on your back. So. Here's a new one for what you, What else Anthony? do we got, Dane? We have with using an SiO2 sealant. Should I toss the towel or can I just wash using rag stretches or a tide free and gentle and be okay. With an SiO2 sealant, I would highly recommend washing the rags to ridges. That would be my go-to. Um, if that was a quick detailer question, it would be different. I would say you'd be fine with a free and clear, but with an SiO2 based product, um, jump straight to rags to ridges. Absolutely. And uh, Anthony, this might just be because you're wearing a blue shirt, but uh, G Davis says, Anthony is the Billy Mays of detailing. That is honestly the best compliment I think I've ever received in my life, especially coming from G. Davis, who is also a connoisseur of infomercials, who has had many late nights, right, staying up, watching the weird things on TV. As a new father, I would say I've pretty much seen everything at this point, right? And I've almost bought everything at this point, right? When they're like, call toll free, I'm that guy that's almost calling toll free. That, that, that's just how it works. 
Then Did I you got Jesse. <laughs> Did you start, start up there. <laughs> Read Jesse it off to Rayo me. here, guys. Asking, if you guys had the time, would you suggest to wait an hour or two to let water dry before an application after blowing it out? If you had the time, yeah, do it. If you have the time, absolutely. There's a lot of things you can do when you have all the time in the world. That is true. And Darren here just wants to say, love that you all are sharing your knowledge with us. Appreciate each of you fellas. Thank, well, thank you, you Darren. Darren. Thank you for watching. All right. Is that a real picture of you out there floating somewhere beautiful? Look at those yeah, blue it looks waters. Really can nice, you get, can actually. You get a shot of that, Glenn? Oh, wait. That's on the TV. You can see it. It's amazing. That looks like. I'm uh, not a huge fan of rafting. <laughs> Me and Levi both don't really know how to swim very well. We don't well, know how to swim. So we stay out of the water, but it looks like a lot of fun. We'll wear life jackets and kind of bob in the shallow end. <laughs> Is that a glacial lake, Darren? That looks like a glacial lake. There. Oh, there, there we go. That's a very up close <laughs> shot. Yeah. Very, very glacial. All right. I got Roper here again. It says, thanks for clarifying and really appreciate you guys being available to answer questions. Reinforces why I buy my products from TRC. You guys rock. Thank you, Roper crew. Thank you. That's awesome, man. Uh, oh, here's a good one from Jesse asking, are there any areas you should avoid when coding with Legend? Avoid uh, coating. Other than the windshield, Any maybe. areas you should avoid coating. The windshield, rear window if you've got a wiper on it. I would avoid coating any type of trim work that you may not want glossy and or possibly shiny. There's some trim work where it could be a really, you know, a really matte, matte finish and you might coat over it or you might touch over that matte finish and you might get something that appears to be glossy or it might have a little bit more uh, have, a, have a deeper, darker look, and if you don't universally finish that out, then you might have a bad time, right? Or mm -hmm. if there was a strip of matte vinyl, maybe on a vehicle, or it had stripes, right? And you weren't planning on coating over those stripes and getting a nice universal finish, and you kind of, you know, nick an area, right? That's going to stay that way, and that's going to look that way for a long period of time. So mm. try to watch out for surfaces like that. Um, basically, anything that you want shiny, have at it. Anything you don't want shiny, you might want to be a little more careful. So Okay. Now, I've got Jamie the Cleaner here with a, an interesting suggestion. He says, I'm with Mr. Jeff. Bring back the Everest. Oh, Jamie, you weirdo. <laughs> you guys like those big, heavy towels? I mean, I, I, like, like, him, I like him every once in a while, but I, I like mean, the it's not. The 800 was where it was at. Well, the original 800 or yes. the, the new 800? The, the original 800 was pretty cool. The original 800 was, cool was really cool. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Grant Autry just popping in. Wow, what have I missed? Man, if you're joining this late, you, you definitely missed a good chunk of stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> you missed just a little bit there, Grant. Uh, having a then good time getting this vehicle coded. I've got Efren Aguilera here. Do you recommend to take a class on coding or just go straight to do it on your own car first? Effort, that's a great question. I don't recommend going straight into your own car first if you've never experienced a ceramic coating before. Um, if you can take a class, if you really, if, if, you, if you have the ability like to get take a, a class. Get a junkyard hood. Do that or get a junkyard hood, right? Or I'm sure, honestly, this is, this sounds horrible. This does sound horrible. I'm gonna look at- Do your at, neighbor's cars. Who, who am I looking at? I'm looking at you, Glenn. So this sounds absolutely horrible. You, you're, you're gonna know people in your life who literally don't give a crap about their car. You could yep. literally throw eggs at their car and they do not care. All you have to do is ask that person who cares nothing about their car, say, hey, can I practice detailing on your car? They will never tell you no. I swear to you, they will <laughs> oh, you, never tell you, you no. You wanna clean my you car? You say, hey, um, worst case scenario, I kinda mess up the paint. Yeah, I don't care. Seriously, there's people out there like that and you know them, you just have to ask around. But ask them if you can practice, right? Because if it turns out amazing, you're a hero, yep. right? If it turns out bad, they're not going to know the difference because it they're, already looks bad. It's still going to look great. <laughs> well, yeah, it'll still probably <laughs> look better than, than how it came. I mean, honestly, when you practice polishing a car, especially on somebody's car that they don't care about, unless you're using nothing but the backing plate or you flip that polisher upside down, there's really <laughs> not a whole lot worse that that car can get, especially if it's been neglected. Yeah. Just saying. Fair. It's hot uh, back here. <laughs> it is hot. We're getting sweaty. Ooh. That glacial pool starts to look pretty good right now, right? Well, Darren, oh. 
Darren said it, it really is a glacial lake, so uh, I was glad I was noticing the water there. He says it's Lake Louise in Alberta. I know that one. We visited from Arkansas this year. That's cool, man. Oh, nice. Uh, Dane, yeah. are we planning a Canadian trip every once in a while or, or, or soon? Or are we making a trip up north to the Great White hmm. North? We What's the plan? have not done that yet, but I don't see why we couldn't. So what would be your first stop in Canada that you would want to go? go and do well when i was a kid we would always visit victoria across the strait of juan de fuca from squim in washington there mm -hmm. head out from port angeles and go over to victoria that was like a two-hour boat ride but yeah that was the easiest way to get to uh, canada from where i lived in washington anyway I i'd like to go back there i kind of miss that british columbia all that stuff that was cool really liked it there see i think i would be about seeing anything with blue water i think i'd mm -hmm. be about seeing anything with moose it, mooses. You know, they're called meeses. They're, they're called <laughs> You're moose. just like meese. I would like to see something like that. <laughs> I feel Maybe. like this is just going to end with you making the Brian Reagan boxing joke. No, no, no. <laughs> but I would like to have some maple, Cana you know, some Canadian syrup, right? Something a little bit thicker, um, <clears> something <throat> a little bit sweeter. Okay. And uh, maybe enjoy some other baked goods they have up there. Oh, and what's that called? Uh, uh, um, what's that called with the fries? Poutine. Oh. Poutine. I've never had real poutine. I actually don't think I've ever actually had poutine in my I life. I have it down what? the street at the Boise Fry Company. It's not the same thing, though. Literally. I think, I think Mr. Ivan LaCroix said it wasn't the same thing. He did. Yeah. <laughs> he said he's like, it's not the same. This is an Idaho poutine, not a Canadian poutine. If you go, at least to British Columbia, you could Start literally get yeah. poutine get, you know, at A&W, of all places, the fast food joint. And they had it all starting the to dry quick, so that's why we're doing this. All right. It is drying so. quicker in this corner, probably because <laughs> yeah. the humidity from our sweat. It's warmer over there, too. It is warm. I've got a good question here now, from one Harlem thing, Finest. What's, oh, yeah. Go ahead and read it, Dane. Sorry. Are you guys you going go, to Anthony? create a guide so or bundle job. package for there? the ceramic Take coatings on the site, right. i.e. suggested towels for coatings for best performance, etc.? Dane, I'm sorry you kind of cut out there. Leave, I might have to read the all right, comment. So That's all right. It's up it there. It says, are you guys going to create a guide or bundle package for the ceramic coatings on the site? Suggested towels for coatings for best performance, etc. Dane, take that comment down before Jeff sees it. We're going to have to do a lot more work. <laughs> so, Harlem's <laughs> Finest, I will tell you that we are having a sale coming up, and we do have some packs that we've created with G-Technic coatings with the best towels and the best applicators bundled for those specific coatings. So, yes, for that product, we will. All right, that answers that then. Uh, let's see, I kind of skipped ahead in the comments, but that was mostly just a back and forth exchange between Jamie the Cleaner and Abel here. Uh, oh, Keith, Actually, I think yeah, Keith popping. I can feel that this towel feels like it has some coating in it. And I think that Levi's grabbed me a couple more which is great. There you go. Yeah, this one, this one I think got mixed up. So we're, we're down, we used our six. We used our six? Yeah. Dang it, yeah. that means you guys have to buy, buy more, more towels, towels if you're, if you're wanting, wanting to coat, coat a, a Denali, Denali uh, right? With, That's a, right, yeah. with a little bit of legend. You have to do at least 10. Ah, eight to 10. Here, I'm gonna here say. I had us below 10, but that's okay. We're still right at that, so. Uh, I have the chum bucket with another question for you this. here. And one for good measure. I'm going to pop that up on the screen. Hopefully one of you guys can read that there. <clears throat> We've got the chum bucket, if Levi can hear me. So Anth you'll notice I haven't done Anthony's fender yet. I'm uh, not ready for you to do it yet. I'm I know, working over I here. Know. So what we're going to do, grab my towel here, I'm starting to sweat. So Now, the other thing you don't want to happen is for a bead of sweat to drip onto the paint. Correct. And That's for that, right. Levi likes to wear bandanas, where he looks a little bit like a Ninja Turtle. I do. I look a little tougher when I do that, too. Levi, if you had to choose a, your favorite Ninja Turtle, who are you picking? Uh, I was always a big Donatello fan. Really? Yeah. The stick one? Yeah. With his stick? I used to have myself a very own bow staff that I made out of a piece of uh, wood that came from my closet <laughs> when I was a kid. I'm going to do some sweet bow staff fighting skills with that. See, I thought uh, uh, 
Raphael was a little bit too much of a, he's kind of an ass. I didn't really <laughs> like him. I liked Leonardo though. He had the swords and his thing was blue. I thought it was pretty sweet. Michelangelo though. I think Michelangelo was just a fan favorite though amongst many. But uh, I found that a lot of people that liked, you know, the nerd stuff really liked Donatello for his bow staff skills. I did notice that. So my wife was actually a bigger fan of Casey Jones. Re oh, I'm sure she was. <laughs> <laughs> weren't, weren't they all, right? Yeah. We were, were watching a show the other night and, and the, uh, the actor that played him yeah. popped on and I said, Casey Jones! And my wife was like, are you sure that's him? And I was like, yeah, it's, yes. <laughs> Time comes for Pretty us cool all, guy, guys. if you ask me. <laughs> uh, I did have a question here. I don't know if you guys can. Now I reached or... over onto the hood this way. That way, I didn't have to like lean over all the way to get to those to that spot. I'm operating under the assumption that I can't be heard right now, but I'm going to go ahead and try and put this back on screen. Remember, our worry here is just that it's so warm now here that we're going to start having to chase this. Now, does it get as warm as this when you're in your own garage doing this? No, because I usually have a fan on. Well, how I many fans do you have total? Four. Do you have them on all the time? Yes. Oh. And they're always just keeping the air moving, not directly pointed on the vehicle. Like I'll turn the one that's pointed on the well, hood and that's, off. And that's the MOSH, uh, uh, the Master of Shine uh, cooling solution that's package, right, right? That's right. Now, where could they find more information about that? Do you have a video in your garage by chance? Um, yes, I do. You can go to, the, go to the Bragg Company page and look up the relatable garages. And you can see what I've developed what Anthony's developed, what Jimmy's developed, what Dane's even developed. His lighting solution package is quite possibly the envy of the industry. Well, he's just got so many different angles, you know what yeah. I mean? And so many different well, types of- Well, when you have works of art like Dat Booty and uh, the Jag, um, it, you need right, the right lighting to be able to see yeah. uh, those vehicles <clears throat> in their glory, really. I agree. <laughs> now I'm gonna show somebody something really quick here. So on this uh, driver's side window, I've, I've taken too long. I've taken too long. I've basically having a little bit of some streaking issues, right? So I'm going to take my applicator here, my damp applicator, with just a little bit of a product on it, and I'm going to come back over here. So see here, I go to wipe, what's happening? Not a whole lot, right? I'm going to have to really scrub that down. I don't want to do that. Going back to the cannibalistic nature of this, we're going to go ahead, reapply the coating, soften that up. And then I'm going to come back through and I can take my towel and buff that off. And I'm going to be able to get a street free finish that way. So that's the plan for that. If you happen to let it sit on there for too long and the same process applies to paint. If you let it sit on there for too long, let's just say it all is not lost, right? This isn't ruined. You just need to go back over it with a little bit more. So I'm actually going to reload this applicator with a little bit more product and give it another go. Looking at these camera angles, Dane, I think Anthony needs a haircut. What do you think? <laughs> I'm starting okay. to look a little homeless after having a baby and not getting out much. Oh Just boy. a whole lot of sitting, a whole lot of eating, <laughs> and a whole lot of TV watching. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I've been trying to get some comments up on the page here for the last few minutes, but I don't think you guys okay, have heard me. Applying so. more of my product. <laughs> Ain't coming back through. Sorry, guys. They clearly I'm can't hear that. me. <laughs> I'm going to get that streak-free finish. I'm going to. I'm going to chase an after it right but now. But it's on screen really for anybody who would like to point it out to uh, screen, our fine detailers there. <sighs> I am uh, going to try and get this high spot off before it dries. So someone needs to read that for us. Dane, if you can. Oh, don't worry. I've been trying. <laughs> Depends so, on the coating. Depends on the coating. Depends on the coating. I will tell you that most of the towels I use when I'm coating, it probably because I work for a towel company, I usually toss or I give to friends who have no microfiber towels or I use them for other jobs, but um, around the house, not for detailing. But 
in most cases, just demoting them. I mean, I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, after, after one heavy coating job where that towel saw a lot, or maybe it saw a high solids content coating, I'm going to demote it to maybe something for oil pickup in the garage. Maybe something yeah. like, I don't know. I mean, heck, dude, I use towels for everything in the garage. I killed a spider with a towel the other day, yep. right? Did I think to myself, I better wash this towel because <clears throat> it's got a spider in it and spider guts? No, I thought I'm going to probably throw this towel away because I already used it for a dirty job. Then I killed a spider. Now I need to send it off the right way. <laughs> Something like Just that. think of how and luxurious that spider's tube was. On that note, here's an question. Luxurious. <laughs> you guys the door jam. No. Now you can do that if you want. I've never coated door jams ever. Now, Glenn, do those streaks go away? Looks like it. Right? Heck yeah. All is not lost, even when things start to get a little stressful. Right? You think, oh my gosh, the coating has dried. I'm screwed. And you go back through, knock it all down. Dane, what else you got for us? Any more I've comments? I've got Al here asking a question. If you take a look Once at Once installation complete, can you comment on the total amount of product you actually use to cover a large SUV? And how does this compare to the posted manufacturer's recommendation for vehicle size? So we are halfway through this bottle. Can you see that, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. We can get on Jimmy's cam here. So there's where we're at. So we're halfway in the bottle. Not too bad. We've done everything but the front bumper. Oh, is this headlight good to go? Yeah, you okay. can wipe the headlights off. This fender and headlight are our last couple spots, and then we got to do this front bumper. But we've used half of the product so far. So we have technically enough to do a second to coat. do our second coat. So 30 mils on this Yukon, standard Yukon, uh, will work just fine. Now. The Suburban, well, that sounds like we'll probably use about three quarters of a bottle yeah. for one coat. So on a Suburban or something like Dane's truck, I'd probably recommend buying two bottles yep. of I the agree. product just so you have enough because you can never have enough coating. It's always the bummer when you run totally yeah. out and yeah. you don't have any. Coating is something you always want to. I mean, if you can go into a job let's just say you have maybe a couple jobs planned right let's just say you have three jobs planned yeah. right and you know for sure that one bottle will get you possibly through two buy two bottles right because then you'd have an extra half a bottle potentially um or if that you know does that make any sense i yeah. don't know it's basically no, it just, just 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 try to product. calculate what you could be doing in the future and maybe just account for that and pick up another bottle but between that and towels that you're going to use you really can't have enough um, applicators are something that you have a little bit more leeway with because this you'll get two uses out of, um, but you might want to pick up another couple extra applicators. So if you, um, for example, where's the camera? What am I looking? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. Looking at you. <laughs> Who am I looking at? Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm looking at Anthony. Um, so something I want to point out here, right? You have two sides to this. You drop this applicator. Are you screwed? Probably. I wouldn't recommend dropping this applicator, uh, but it could potentially happen. So if you are planning on doing a coating job, have extra applicators at hand. So if I didn't have this, this thing right here, what would I pick up? I would pick up the Pearl Puck that we have at the Rag Company. And so what that is, it's basically a pearl weave with the um, barrier. So, but it's a puck, right? So when you hold it in your hand, it kind of feels like a baseball, but when you look at it, it's a pearl weave, but underneath that pearl weave, you have the same barrier that you would have within the PNS Legend kit. So, okay, here we go. There we go. That's what I would use. So, what I'm saying, have a couple of these on hand with any coating job, because chances are you're going to drop this, something's going to happen, it's not worth picking up and blowing out, and then having to worry about every single swipe you do. Um, if you drop that, toss it, move on. Pick up one of these. These come in, I believe it's a three pack, Levi, on the Pro Plus? A uh, four pack. Four pack. So comes in a four pack. Again, pearl weave design. It's got this nice little seam here that you can grip onto. And then from there, um, just apply your product. Apply your product to just one side and start going. But uh, you can see here in terms of the ergonomic comfort of this versus this. Glenn, which one looks better in my hand? The puck? It does, because it feels more comfortable. I'm not just saying that. 
But because see here, when I grab like a three by five applicator, my fingers curl, curl over, right? And I'm saying this is a guy that doesn't have the biggest hands in the world, right? My fingers still curl over. So with this, this works out perfect for me and it just feels more comfortable. I feel like I can just knock out a whole car with this and actually enjoy picking it up. Whereas after a while, your hands are gonna start to feel arthritic. Um, who knows, you might have carpal tunnel, right? You don't wanna grab something like this. So there you go, Pearl Puck. Have a couple of those on hand with any coding job you pretty much ever do. Either that or another type of applicator. Um, it's just not worth dropping your applicator and having to resort to something that's unideal. I've done it before and I've resorted to using a towel to apply a coating and it sucked. I didn't want to do that. It was the worst thing ever. I wasted a ton of coating and it wasn't a good even coverage. Don't do that. So applicators are something you can never have enough of so always stock up on those. So that's the Pearl, uh, the Pearl Puck but then there's also the Pearl uh, 3 by 5 sponge as well. So Levi, how are we looking? It smells great in here. Almost done. It smells like a little bit of PNS legend. Ooh. So this yeah, I'm like just, it's all done. done. I'm done. just wiping it all down. So how would you, okay, how about this? Here's another question maybe for people watching. How much would you charge to coat this grill? If you wanted to coat this grill, what would you charge? Because this is pretty intricate. Would you coat it? How would you go about that? Would you do a spray sealant? If it was new, mm -hmm. if it was brand new, I'd probably coat it because okay. I would keep it as nice as possible. But this is three years old. Um, there's a lot of tarnishing. Correct. And the cost to coat this, right? Or the time it would take you to go through every single little square inch of this. I'd probably charge an extra. Buying, but versus buying a new one. Yeah, I would, I would charge probably an extra hundred bucks. Okay. Uh, just on a new one, just to add it to the coating, just plan for that to go, you know what? To do an SUV like this, to get in the grill and all that, I'm gonna add an extra hundred dollars to the price. Your customer doesn't need to know that. Yeah. But they're just, know, they're but looking you, at the size you know of the know it vehicle. mentally. Yeah. Because, you know, this, it's never fun getting into a situation where you're like, I wasted a whole extra hour just working on that, yeah. you know, or two hours for some folks. So okay. um, it's, it's definitely worth it. And if you have an employee and you're charging an extra hundred bucks, maybe you're paying them 25, throw them on that spot for an hour and let them just work on this while you do the rest of the car. That way you can get it done quicker, faster, a little easier. All right, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I do have uh, some more questions. Oh. So I wanted to join Levi, but I wanted to join him in a little bit more comfort, right? <laughs> so um, going back to what's comfortable, right? I just saw Levi. Uh, on my knees. On his knees. Which right? hurt today. On his knees, but you were also doing it like this. You were on your knees like that. Yeah. That looks pretty horrible. How old are you? 41 How years long? Old. How many more years do you think you could do that for? I don't know. Probably not a lot, right? Especially Maybe since 20. He, especially since he's been doing it for the last 20 years. So let's talk about some seating, right? You could knock out probably three quarters of this vehicle sitting down when it comes to uh, coatings, right? Well, our friend Buck Hoogaboom, that's, he, well, he, that's he what he loves doing. He does his best sitting down. Along he does. With Dane. He loves sitting down to coat cars. Yeah. He tries his hardest to only be seated in a rolling chair for the entirety of the coating and has worked on that as a plan. Correct. So this is pretty cool. So our friends over at Viper Chairs, they sent us out this new attachment for our chair here. Now what's cool about this, off to my side, I got myself a dedicated towel rack, right? Oh. I can hold one towel, two towel, three towels, however many towels I want to hold there, and I could pull from there, right? I can set it, I can drop it down inside there. Basically, I'm not going to lose my towel and all of a sudden I'm going to risk dropping it because when I'm typically doing a coating and I'm sitting down, that's where my towel is on my lap and then I go to reach or I go to move, this falls under the ground, right? Setting it off to the side here, tucking it in, it's not going to fall off, it's nice and secure. But then over on this side, pretty cool too, this is a cup holder, so if I want to store something like my Mountain Dew, bam, there's my Mountain Dew. If I want to store my coating, there's my coating in a stainless steel cup. Very nice. If I'd like to do it like that, right? Does it also fit a pearl applicator? It does. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to so, be a, a well-coated uh, stainless steel so cup for basically, sure. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I saw Levi sitting down. I was like, wait, why did we, co why did we coat this car doing everything standing up and on our knees? <laughs> we probably should have grabbed our chairs. So anyway. But it's something to think about, you know, especially if this is something that you're doing in your business two, yeah. three times a day, 
gets a little gets a little harder. To, I mean, I'm out of breath, man. Um, but it's hot in here too. It's hot. Uh, good news is though, we've laid an entire coat, one coat of Legend on the car. Yeah. Looks pretty good. I'm really Looks impressed great. at how well that red glows. I was, uh, I love this color. Well, it also, like I said, it, it, it brings more warmth to the paint. It does, yeah. So no, it's, uh, cool. it's funny that this thing has been uh, such a great little car, but it's been one of those things where we literally have only been washing it when we've like tested it. We had to, there were some products on the paint yeah. that maybe went, uh, went wrong. Yeah, and, we, were, we were doing some very early product testing and yeah. uh, didn't go well. And so we had to get that off. It was funny to see some of that product still on the surface and go, oh, after, wow, that's uh, years. almost three years is sitting on there. That's pretty good. But uh, uh, this is, it's good to finally get this thing properly coated. I agree. It's one of the things that this car needed, especially because it does the majority of the runs up and down to the cabin. So it yeah. hits those mountain roads and uh, gets a lot of uh, abuse. So. Mm -hmm. This is the, this is a, it's nice to finally get it. So there's, there's that. Now you guys are probably wondering, can we uh, do the wheels? Yeah, you can do the wheels with Legend if you want. We're not going to. Um, a respirator, a respirator, shiny fenders. You could wear one, probably should, um, but PNS has stated that there's not a need for this. I would recommend though, if you're doing this daily, two or three cars a day with a ceramic coating, then I would definitely recommend that you wear a respirator and be as safe as possible. So, yeah. All right, we got any more questions there, Dane? Many. I've been trying to get them to you for a while, but Dane, I don't think you guys how heard many more me. questions we got? One, two, three, 17, 32. I just stopped talking because I figured you guys couldn't hear me. All right, me, so, so we got here. We go. We said we got from <laughs> okay. Sean. Says, uh, what's what's a great TRC towel for gleaning, polishing? A glass desk, an Everest. Thanks, team. You guys are awesome. A glass desk, I would not use an Everest on. It's probably the last towel I'd use that on. I'd use an FTW, or I would use um, something like that. Which is or an FTW. Or I would use a Dry Me a River uh, 16 by 16. I would use the 16 by 16 waffle, or even the standard waffle mm -hmm. would be ideal. I think uh, one of the most underrated towels that we have in our lineup that we still sell today is the standard waffle weave. It's, oh. That's what it's, what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's called the standard waffle weave. You can get it at the rag company. It's good for so many things. It, do we still, we still have it in blue and yellow, right? Blue, blue and yellow, and, yellow, and yeah. then dark blue. And then uh, light blue, so light blue, yeah. dark blue, and yellow. It's my favorite around the house cleaning towel when I'm not grabbing maybe like a mm -hmm. creature or something like that because it is, you can't kill that towel. Mm. It literally is, it is, it is invincible. And it's lint free. And it is lint free. So um, check, it's just called the standard waffle leaf. It's, it's, not, it's not an exciting looking towel. Um, but damn, if that's not the most durable towel we sell. Yeah, super durable, high GSM content, but super tight weave yeah. on it. So. Uh, we got JB says, which engine bay dressing leaves a more natural looking finish between motor plast and dynamic dressing? I think motor plast to me looks more natural, personally. Yeah. I think so. Dynamic is good, it's, it's pretty close, but motor plast, it's when you open that hood and it's leveled, it, I, I like it. Both are great mm -hmm. products though. How long after opening a bottle have you personally been able to reuse product from a pre previously open ceramic coating bottle? That depends on the coating and it yeah. depends on how it's stored. Uh, at my house, I've got a couple of legend bottles that I've made sure that the lids are on tight mm -hmm. and then I've set them back in the box and then I've closed the box and then I leave them in my garage. But my garage never sees crazy high temperatures because it's climate controlled. So um, you have a mini fridge in your garage? No. Could you put a coating I in your I could mini put fridge? it, I could. Um, if I had one, but I, I just put it in the, on the shelf yeah. in a container and uh, in a little tote and close the lid on it so there's no real air. Yeah. And uh, I've got six months to a year. I don't recommend using a coating anytime past that unless it hasn't been broken. You know, the seal isn't broken. Well, and what's nice, I remember what I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. I said don't Keep throw the away box. the box, right? Because that's going to go right inside there like that, nice and pressed in. You're going to throw that inside there. And then throw that in a plastic tote, throw, put throw the that. lid on it, put it in your garage, and you've fine. got all your coatings You're in a fine. tote. You don't have to worry. You well, can, you can even get them with the, uh, with the waterproof lid on them. Well, you can also do a Ziploc bag, too. That, Just, too. You can, throw, you can throw that into a Ziploc bag and throw it in there. But that's what I'm saying. Don't throw away your boxes. I, I, I used to throw away all my boxes, and then I would look, and I would not remember when I got that coating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I can typically remember when I got it by looking at the dang box and seeing what shape it's in and being like, okay, this was an old... Yeah, old, old no, and that's coating. a good, 
good point. So, so uh, we have Jesse Rayo says, how long should I wait until a vehicle sees the weather after coating? Um, it can see light. I mean, it can technically see light rain depending on the coating, typically within a few hours. And so that's why for a long time, a lot of coatings had a topper for the topper that would protect that coating during the curing process. So like, you know, back in the day, um, you'd put Opti Seal over, to, over the top of gloss coat. It would protect it until it, it, until it cured out. Um, but I would say realistically, um, heavy water, heavy washing, um, give it a week to two weeks. Um, when it comes to something like rain, that's something that's kind of unavoidable sometimes. So I would say if the car does get wet, um, don't necessarily dry it off in the rain. Just drive it, park it, and call it good. Um, but it depends. I, I don't know. Levi, if you, if you had a case of dirty rain that we have here in Idaho that got over a freshly coated car, are you cleaning it off or are you letting it sit? Uh, I'm, it depends on the coating. I'm going to probably wait till the coating cures to take it off. Yeah. Just because I don't want to harm the coating during the curing process. Okay. Good answer. Uh, Joseph Mitchell says, uh, hi guys, proud distributor of PNS, KCX Rupes, Skin Grip, and many more at LLD Cell Supply, Long Island. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Joseph. Appreciate it, man. And uh, what else we got here, Dane? Kick him off to me. Let's keep going. Absolutely love Rag Company Towels, Eagle Edges 500 is my go-to towel. Thank you, Parker. It's also one of my go-to nice. favorites. But it also depends on the color, though. What's your favorite color in that Eagle Edges 500? And uh, Tom Kirby says, late today, so we'll watch again to learn it. Well, hopefully you enjoy it. It's been a fun one. This has been good. It's been a good time doing this live. And then uh, Levi would say Casey from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Huh? All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and toss it back to Dane in the ether. What's going on, Dane? <laughs> okay, well, that's been fun. I think we learned some valuable lessons on this live, i.e. how I communicate with you guys through the system. So I think I will be coming up with a list of things we could do to improve that so that we can have a better flowing show in the future for these. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, barring all of that, I really appreciate everybody who took the time to come in on an afternoon and watch us do a little coding on this Yukon. I know the owner really appreciates it. She's going to be super excited to see what the guys have done. I think she may have been peeking in on the stream just to see what was happening. And in fairness, the truck looked gorgeous. I really think uh, it turned out great. I mean, taking a look around it, it just, it shines. It's got that that candy look to it that you really want out of that uh, deeper red. Very, very flattering color on that. Now, I'm going to pop up another question here. I'm just make sure I get that out there. Jesse Rayo saying, thank you guys so much. I can't wait to coat my truck. Also, sadly, the V-Rod is for sale. Well, I guess if anybody is in the market for a V-Rod... They come up once in a while, but his, I can vouch for it, Jesse's is extremely nice. So anybody interested in a V-Rod, hit Jesse up. Um, other than that, this is basically just us doing what we do with our lives. I, I really appreciate it. And you guys tune in when we do these live streams and you make it possible for us to continue to do these. So thank you, everybody who contributed, left comments and support. And uh, still is here is no exception. So you guys get the idea. Anyway, guys. If you're new to this and you haven't subscribed to the Rag Company YouTube channel, make sure you do so. Go and click that subscribe button and you'll catch more content like this live and we produce videos too. So you're going to get a nice mix. Now the one thing I'll say before we go here is every single Thursday on the Rag Company YouTube channel, you can look forward to Q&A Thursday. That's where we do a live stream where we answer your questions live here in the podcast studio. And uh, they can be anything car related, detailing related, all that stuff. If you've got questions that have just been burning you up and you got to ask them, well, that's what we're there for. So make sure you tune in for that at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Thursday. Apart from all that, thank you guys. Have a great, great week, and we'll see you on Thursday. All right. Take care. <laughs>